Hi, welcome to IB Physics Made Easy. Circular motion is a very specific type of motion. It is involved in many areas of physics, which are part of your curriculum, like uh, particle physics, mechanics, gravity, uh, and even charges in motion in a magnetic field. So, let's check this out. You have a circle, and you have the object which is going around the circle, i.e. in circular motion. So, this circle has a center here, and a certain radius. And the object, say, would be here. And it's turning around, therefore, it's got a velocity which is tangent to its motion. This is called linear velocity. A bit later, it's, say, here. So here, too, it will have a velocity tangent to its motion. Now, the magnitude of the velocities are the same. Therefore, the speed is constant throughout the circular motion. However, you notice that their direction has changes. So if the velocity has changed, there is an acceleration somewhere. And for circular motion, the acceleration equals v squared on r, where v is a linear velocity, the magnitude of the linear velocity, therefore the speed, and r the radius of the circle. Notice that the direction of the acceleration will be the, that of delta v. So if I took this vector and subtract it to this one, I would find an acceleration towards the center of the circle. Now, if there's an acceleration, there is a force. And if I apply the second law of Newton, I find f equals ma, and I can replace a by v squared on r, m being the mass of the object in circular motion. Now, why is this expression so cool? It's because it's a mathematical expression of the force that's causing a circular motion. This force can be anything else. It can be gravity, it can be magnetism, it can be the tension in a string, uh, in a string which is swirling. So let's case, take the case of gravity, for instance. I'm going to use an example for that. I'm going to imagine that my center of the circle is actually Earth and that the object in rotation around the center, around the Earth, is the Moon. So I know there is a force between Earth and the Moon, which is directed from the Moon to Earth, and that's a force of gravity. So the force of gravity is proportional to the product of the two masses, the mass of the Earth and the mass of the Moon, and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. So, the radius squared. Now, this force of gravity is what is causing the circular motion. Therefore, it is also equal to mv squared on r. Ah, now it's becoming interesting, because I can equate these two and solve problems. So, that's what I'm going to do. The force of gravity is going to be equal to what is called the centripetal force, i.e. the mass of the object in circular motion multiplied by v squared on r, so the mass of the moon, by the speed squared of the moon divided by r. So I can see I can do some simplifications now. I can remove one of the r's, I can remove the mass of the moon. And I get this expression for the speed of the object in motion, so the Moon. If I remove the square, I can square root it. And now, if I had, for instance, a question asking me for the speed uh, of the Moon and giving me the mass of the Earth and the distance between the Moon and the Earth, I could answer the question. Actually, I'm going to, while I do the addition of the videos, I will put some numbers uh, somewhere here, <coughs> and you will have to calculate this speed. Now, the best way to see how useful circular motion is, like a tool you bring out of your pocket, whoop, and you solve a problem with it, well, the best way to show this is to practice. So, 
in this video follows two exercises, one with gravity and one with a charge moving in a magnetic field. Oh, what just happened? Where the hell am I? Oh, wow, it's pretty beautiful actually. Now let's go for a walk. Okay, I'm going to stop here. It's too slippery. It's probably ice on the ground, but I can see Saturn over there. So I guess if I look at the size of Saturn, I must be around 300,000 kilometers away. I get it. I'm on Tethys. Tethys is a moon of Saturn, which is about a thousand kilometers in diameter. And if I remember well, it's in its perfect circular orbit around Saturn at a speed of 40,000 kilometers an hour. Here are the exact data. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to calculate the mass of Saturn. Good luck. So, how did it go? We are looking for the mass of Saturn. We have Titis here, which is in circular motion around Saturn. The information we have is the speed of Titis and the distance between Titis and Saturn. So, the first thing I want to do here is actually to uh, change the units to make them usable and consistent. So, I want the speed in meters per second. So I type 4,860 and I divide by 3.6 and I get 11,350 meters per second. Now the distance between uh, Saturn and its moon. Kilometers is 10 to the 3, so I have 2.946 by 10 to the 8 meters. I encourage you to use scientific notation when you have big numbers like this. Because it's easy, you know, to get messed up with the zeros. So, well, Titis is in a circular motion around Saturn. Therefore, the force that is applied on Titis that is the cause of this circular motion must have a mathematical expression corresponding to that of a circular motion. Therefore, the force on Titis will be equal to the mass of Titis multiplied by the square of its speed divided by the radius of the motion. But this force, where does it come from? It comes from gravity. It's Titis which is attracted to Saturn by gravity. So the force of gravity between Titis and Saturn is proportional to the mass of Titis multiplied by the mass of Saturn divided by the distance between them squared. Now, these two forces are the same force. It's just that the force of gravity, because it causes a circular motion, has also mv squared on r as expression. Therefore, I can equate the two forces. Let's do that. So, mass of Titis multiplied by v squared on r equals g mass Titis mass Saturn divided by r squared. So, I can do some simplifications get rid of the r's, and get rid of the mass of Tethys. Now I get this expression, v square equal, equals g mass of Saturn divided by r. What am I looking for? The mass of Saturn. Therefore, I can express it, mass of Saturn equals v square, equal <laughs> v square r divided by g. Well, I just need to plug in the numbers now. Let's do that. The mass of Saturn equals, so the speed in meters per second squared 
multiplied by the radius in meters, 2946 by 10 to the 8, divided by the universal constant for gravity, 6.67 by 10 minus 11. Let's put this in the calculator. Squared multiplied by 2.946 10 to the minus 8, 10 to the 8, divided by 6.67, 10 to the minus 11. And I find for the mass of Saturn, 5.69, how many significant numbers? Oh, I could actually put four significant numbers. So, oh, that's at 69 by 10 to the 26 kilograms. Here we go. So you see the usefulness of using circular motion in that situation. Did you find this value, by the way? Okay, let's go to the next exercise, which will involve a charge moving in a magnetic field. The next exercise will be about an electron that is about to enter a magnetic field. You see the magnetic field is directed towards the board, like the signs suggest. Its, its intensity, the magnetic flux density, is equal to 4 by 10 to the minus 4 Tesla. The speed of the electron is given, 4 by 10 to the 5 meters per second. The mass and the charge of the electrons are also given. So the first question is, what will be the path of the electron when it enters the magnetic field? This path will be a curvature one. Therefore, the second question is, what is the radius of the path of the electron? So this data is going to appear on your screen. Pause the video. Work this one out by yourself, and I will come back to give you the solution. Welcome back. How did this one go? We have an electron entering a magnetic field. An electron is a charged particle, right? So I'm going to use a hand rule that allows me to find the motion or to find the force that is applied on a moving charge in a magnetic field. So my hand rule, well, there are many hand rules out there, I've got my own. My hand rule is the following. From the palm comes out the magnetic field. The fingers show the motion of the charge in the magnetic field. And the thumb will show the force. Note that this is valid for positive charges. It's my right hand. It's valid for positive charges. If the charge is negative, it's very easy. I just flip the result. Let's apply it here. The electron is entering the magnetic field. Therefore, I apply my hand rule. The magnetic field comes out. It's going into, inside the board. The uh, path of the electron is this way. So the force would be this way. But an electron has a negative charge, so I just flip the force. If it was a proton, it would go up. It's an electron, it goes down. So, my electron is here. The moment it enters the field, it has a force downwards. So it starts to curve. So, my hand would curve too. And you see the force would start being in another direction, always perpendicular to the motion. Well, that looks seriously like circular motion. Because you have the force that's causing the motion, the, cha the change in motion, the force causing the change in motion is directed towards the center of a circle. And that leads us to the second question. What is the radius of this circle? So, the electron is feeling a magnetic force, which is causing a circular motion. Therefore, I can write that this force 
is equal to mb squared on r, m being the mass of the electron. But what is this force? It's the magnetic force. Therefore, the magnetic force is equal to QVB. Q being the charge of the electron, V is velocity or its speed, and B the magnetic flux density. These two forces are identical. The magnetic force is creating the circular motion. Therefore, it also has as a mathematical expression mb squared on r. Therefore, I can equate them. mev squared on r equals qe v b. I see that I can remove one of the v's. And I get a new expression, the mass of the electron by its speed divided by the radius of its path equals its charge multiplied by the magnetic flux density. What I'm looking for, I'm looking for the radius. Well, the radius is here. I can just rearrange the equation to suit my needs. R equals, so it's going to be equal to m of the electron by its speed divided by its charge and the magnetic flux density. I just need to plug in the numbers now. 9.1 by 10 to the minus 31 multiplied by the speed, which is 4 by 10 to the 5, divided by the charge of the electron, 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19, multiplied by the magnetic flux density, 4 by 10 to the minus 4. Okay, so I'm just going to pick up my calculator. 9.1 10 to the minus 31, 4 to the 5, divided by 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19, and by 4. And I find 5.69 by 10 to the minus 3 meters. How many significant figures I have? Two. So R will be equal to 5.7 millimeters, because 10 minus 3 meters is 1 millimeter. Did you find this result? If not, I encourage you to check this exercise again. If you have any comments or questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comments. That's what it's there for, right? Okay. So this closes this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that it was useful. And I'll see you soon in the next edition of IB Physics Made Easy. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.